What was your favorite ad last night? Uh, for me, it wasn't the it wasn't the dogs. Sorry, it's really, authentic. It keeps it real. It's yeah, it was like. the cat. No, just kidding. It was actually Coke. I thought Coke was quite amazing in their emotional spot because they actually created some controversy around it for two reasons. One, um, I'm talking about the America the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, the controversy We're some of it right here. and the controversy for me was really the fact that they introduced a gay couple, which I think was the first time we'd seen that, and then they bragged about the commentary live. So for me, it wasn't just the ad; it was what do you mean, around. tweeting? Yeah, and it wasn't just hey, we just did this beautiful ad. It was more about hey, this is what people are talking about, it, so our sentiment has gone way up. So they actually talked about what the commercial was doing for people and their commentary around the ad itself, which I thought was really amazing, as opposed to just listening to people and bragging about the ad. So, so many of the ads that ran last night kind of draped themselves in patriotism. But isn't this patri no, 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 I'm, I'm, that's what I want to know from these guys. This patriotism. You're Canadian too, right? No, I'm not. Like, no, Does okay. patriotism sell that well? I mean, it's America and it's. Super Bowl, right? So I assume yes. No, I don't know. I'm asking, right? <laughs> a lot of it. I mean, yeah, think, about the the think about the Chrysler commercial with Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan broke my heart, I got to say. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all about America. I think it's Is fair. there anything? What did Bob Dylan no, say? Is there anything more American than America? No. And <laughs> the, the other thing is there's nothing more American than 150 million Americans gathering around the television watching one thing at one time. And so it is kind of, you know, it's the 4th of July of the winter in a way. And I think brands have leaned into that frame. Mm. Sometimes effectively, sometimes it, it hasn't been so great. But, you know, for the, for, for the most part, I think it's a valid strategy. Do you agree with, J with David that having the conversation in social media following the ad is really the new strategy? Well, I think Coke had a built-in controversy into their, into their content. And so I think it was a wise choice to, uh, you know, use that to, fu to help fuel the conversation post the ad. Um, you know, I mean, it was, it's... And embrace it, right? Yeah, and embrace it, talk about it, move it forward. You know, yeah. there, is, there is social commentary in the very content that they had. That, that's a huge change, though, isn't it? Can you imagine? I mean, how, did 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 uh, advertisers embrace controversy a decade ago? No, not. No, totally. they ran screaming, right? Yeah, that's right. And they were hid under the covers. Yeah, and General Mills actually ran. You know, they ran their their multiracial family again last night, which I thought was really quite lovely. But it didn't. It was sort of lost in the noise, especially when they ran the ad. And some of it's part, partly got to do with the context. When do you run your ad? Yeah. So if you were after half time last night, sorry, most people probably didn't take notice of it because they were drowning in their sorrows or yelling in the streets because it was that so polarizing, and that's the live event issue that actually happens. But brand embracing real-time social commentary, we saw that last year with Oreos, but this year everybody was listening. So All right, well, Oreos did it Twitter-wise. We saw last night J.C. Penney that didn't even have an ad during the game really go after it on Twitter. Was that good strategy? Uh, I don't think their content was, was, was good enough. To be honest with you, really. So I, I you know, hold on. I, let's just explain it for a minute. J.C. Penney, you know, some people thought it was sort of drunk tweeting. The point was they were tweeting with mittens. J.C. Penney mittens, hard to tweet with. You just didn't think that was smart enough. Here you go. Who knew this was going to be? Yeah, I mean, just a hot mess. You didn't like it. Well, I think it's sort of, I mean, yeah, in terms of the social conversation, I think it does add to a little bit of intrigue and it's taking a little bit of fun at yourself. But if I, you know, if you're going in that moment in front of all of those millions of people, if I have something to say about my company, what am I going to do? I kind of think there's, in, if you look at the context of where JCPenney is as a brand right now, I think there's probably some better things that they might want to think about. But hold on, what, what, could, what could they have done that people were going to notice, right? You don't care, I'm, I'm taking a leap, I don't think you care about JCPenney. No. I don't care about J.C. Penny. If they had tweeted, look at our new, you know, February mittens, I wouldn't have noticed. I actually think it's probably right time, wrong place. And what I mean by that is, you know, the context of what they were doing was interesting, but in that noise last night, and by the way, social isn't just Facebook and Twitter, man. It should be elsewhere. So if I look at some of the car ads last night, I go to their site, and it has no reflection of the snarkiness or emotion that they're actually playing with their commercials. Yeah. So where I think it is valuable is, and if you look at even you know, what these guys did, what Jason's and Co did, what you guys did was quite smart. Was you pre-played the ad beforehand, the showcasing of it. But the challenge with that is it wasn't surprise and delight when it ran. I'd well, already but, seen but it. there was, but I think there was other surprise and delight moments that Budweiser did. You know, for example, with 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 Puppy Love, we had the puppy tweeting. 
And so, you know, we had filmed this puppy, you know, walking over a keyboard. And then as, 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 as we leaned into the frame of the success of our own communications for Budweiser, you know, then we had the puppy and, you know, we had Britney Spears interacting with, uh, you know, uh, his, 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 his puppy or his, his Twitter feed. I also want to say in terms of releasing the ads earlier, because I think that this is a big topic in, in, in media Huge. today as it relates to the Super Bowl and the amount of investment. I think there's two things. One, releasing it early obviously extends the shoulders of the investment. So if you're a brand, I think it makes perfect sense. Five or six years ago, I was probably against it, but because of what we see in digital media these days, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of value in going early. But I also think consumers, and the way we are in the media today, we add so much fuel to the anticipation of this game that there are only so many storylines within the teams themselves. I think what's going on with the advertising in the big game is a credible storyline, and consumers are using it to fuel their own anticipation and excitement for what happens on Sunday. David, what'd you hate? Uh, well, I thought the hashtag bloop was wrong. Um, salute space, a hero space, confused everybody. You know, you're going to spend $4 million on that to get the hashtag right, so that was a bloop. Mm, good um, point. So that, that bothered me, and the other one was cure.com. I had no idea what that was all about, but flaming your competition is not good. Speaking of hashtags, though, you're correct to point out, of course, that there are other social media besides Twitter yeah. and besides Facebook. but. Last year, you know, we realized the power of Twitter in an event like the Super Bowl when the lights went out, et cetera, et cetera. Does it say anything to you about Twitter that Twitter volume, tweet volume during the Super Bowl went up only 3%? I mean, it's absolutely outrageous how much happens in that commentary. And we're talking about 140 characters. It's really, really hard to get to, to watch any event like that. So I don't have a TV. haven't had one for 15 years. Couldn't give a rat's. But what's really important for me about it is... Couldn't give a rat. What's really important for me is if I'm trying to f watch a live event via these social commentaries, I get lost in the... I have no idea what's going on. So there were already too many tweets. Way too many. Pre-game. Do you then agree I with that? Uh, well, I, you know, Twitter, the pulse of the planet, I think it is. I, I think it's, it, you know, you can get lost in all of that. I think if you're following Are, some, are we some saturated, people. though? Tweets only went up 3%. Well, I think all social media. I mean, everyone's saturated by it. And I think one of the reasons why you're seeing so much emotion play in the Super Bowl these days is if you just think about the nature of social and digital media and everything being so surface and trying to get a cute laugh or something like that, I think making us feel something collectively in one moment is a very powerful thing because you break through all that surface level social media stuff. All right, trying to get a cute laugh can often be considered, is it inauthentic or unauthentic? In? Inauthentic. It's inauthentic. inauthentic. Yeah. And just, just a month ago when David and I were talking about his prophecies for this year, he said authenticity is so important. Absolutely. And I kind of hate saying authenticity, it's like the new disruptive innovation. But Hillary Clinton tweeted last night, you know, she had a very funny, snarky comment saying, you know, it's nice to watch, you know, tackles and blitzes on Fox that aren't at me and other politicians. To yeah. me, that doesn't feel authentic. Maybe Hillary Clinton, there it is, has a super witty, savvy team. But when you read that, does it make you say, I want to follow Hillary Clinton, that's her voice? Or does it feel like she's got a, a really genius, you know, chief of staff? I mean, in my mind, it just feels like a, it, it's a cheap chuckle. Um, and you've passed very quickly from that into something that has substance. Because what happens, I mean, there's 1,900 media messages we hit per day. 250 of them are ads. So if you look at it last night, there was probably 60 plus ads that were run, man. And we're only going to remember about five of them. So the cut through, the ones that I think cut through really interestingly, were the ones that were quiet. Because there's so much noise going on in the game. And then in the ads, the ones that were quiet that actually went back to the human storytelling were the ones that had the cut well, through. Well, to your point about authenticity, I do think it's an overplayed word. But I think it's important. And I think some brands forget it. You know, when, when, when we think about what works in the Super Bowl, what plays, you know, I think you have to entertain and be authentic in equal measure. You have, to, you have to entertain on that stage, because if you don't, you're just going to fall flat. Like, that's, that's just that's Authenticity, just the it's the new disruption. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> I have no doubt that your favorite ads uh, were the Budweiser, Budweiser. ads. As it so I happens, biased, my true. favorite ad of the Super Bowl was an ad that did not air during the Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh. Are you going to air this? Have you we seen are. this? Yeah, and he's the host. He can do oh, it. Oh, the Doritos. Uh -oh. Have you seen this? Glory hole. Yeah, I did see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Did you not oh love this commercial? Oh, that was amazing. Why didn't anybody have the cojones to air this commercial during the Super Bowl? Well, so here's cojones the is the wrong word. To, maybe it's the right word. Well, yeah, give I mean, it that guy is so gnarly. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Here's why people don't do it, man. I actually think if, if it was my choice, I wouldn't actually run a Super Bowl ad. I would just sponsorship programming. I'd just do a sponsorship deal. And I would run, all my, I'd make TV for online because you don't test, 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 dilute, 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 and then suddenly you've got this ad that's kind of a bit passe. And so 
that's why I thought the Coke one was really interesting because they didn't reveal anything. And that's why I thought Newcastle beer was interesting because they said, you know what, we're going to do an ad that isn't a 30 or a 60 or a 130. It could be 10 minutes for all we care. And they've actually go straight digital to say better storytelling happens there. I think the best ads don't run on TV. Wow. Ooh. All right, before we go, you have to tell us the Budweiser ad was it a bunch of people in a room, a whiteboard, and you just said puppies, beer, American flag, Clydesdales? I wish I could just say yes, but that really isn't the case. I mean, you know, what we're searching for is we're searching for a narrative that's true to the brand. Obviously, the Clydesdales, since Prohibition, are a big part of this country, so it plays well to Americana, mm -hmm. you know, point of view here. And then I think just carrying on from last year, telling an endearing story about how some relationships just defy reason. And so there's, there, there's a truth in that, and we thought that the Super Bowl is just a brilliant place to tell that story. Brilliant, like you're now. No better polished. platform, is there? No, not for that.